Hi there and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rob and I'm here with the Balkan School, which is a language school based in the French speaking parts of Switzerland. And this channel is dedicated to helping you improve your language skills. Today, I've got a short video for you on the verb to get. Now this verb can be very confusing for learners of English because it doesn't have just one meaning. We use it in many different contexts. And if you try to translate it into your own language, depending on the context, it will probably be a different word. So our objective here is to try and simplify it for you, clarify where you can use it and give you some examples so that you can then use it in your future language. Let's go. So I'll give you eight different sentences here with the word get. And here there are eight different meanings. And I'll give you a synonym for the word to get in each of these contexts. Example number one, I got an email from Frank yesterday. So what do you think get means in this context? That's right, to receive, the verb to receive. So I received an email from Frank yesterday. It's the same as I got an email from Frank yesterday. So the verb to get can be used as a synonym for the verb to receive. Example number two, it's getting late. We'd better leave. So a synonym. The verb to become. So it's becoming late. We'd better leave. So here, almost nobody would use the word to become. If you say become, then we understand. But in English, almost nobody would use the word to become. Everybody would use the word to get. So this one, try and use the verb to get. This is a good example for you. Some similar examples where we use get in a similar context like this is I'm getting old or I'm getting tired or it's getting hot etc etc so here becoming is the meaning but we really use the verb to get much more often in these contexts example number three can you get me a glass of water please so here to get means to bring something can you get me a glass of water please can you bring me a glass of water please again these are the same meaning in these two different sentences so example number four uh, paul said no but uh, i'll get him to agree so he said, no, originally, you'll get him to agree. This means that you'll persuade him, you'll convince him to do something. So get can be used here to mean persuade. Example number five, I get to work at around 8 a.m. every morning. This one I'm sure you can guess. Yes, it means arrive. So get can mean to arrive. I get to work at 8 a.m. I arrive at work at 8 a.m. Number six, I'm not getting anywhere with this report. So to get somewhere or to not get anywhere, it's often used in a negative. And this one, this means to make progress. Okay, so it could be an affirmative. You say we're getting somewhere. And then if it's a negative, you need any. This is another grammar topic between some and any, but it's a good reminder for you. And we're not getting anywhere or we are getting somewhere. Or the question form, are we getting anywhere? Any, it's in the question and the negative. Small reminder for you. So this means to make progress. We're making progress with this report. We're making progress on this project. We're getting somewhere with this project. We're not getting anywhere with this report. Number seven. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't get that. Do you know what it means? So if you didn't get it, it means you didn't understand. So you could also use it in the affirmative. If somebody says something, you could say, okay, got it. It means yes, I understand, I understood. Okay, this is a really common one. Use this in your language and you'll sound very natural. Number eight, I got a taxi from the airport. Can you guess? That's right, it means to take or to catch. So I got the bus, I got a plane, I got a train, I got a taxi. It's the same as to take or to catch. Okay, there you go. Eight different sentences, eight different meanings. This is just the tip of the iceberg too. It's not completely exhaustive, but for me, these are the eight most common meanings where you'll find the verb to get. By all means, if you use the synonyms, you'll be understood. As I said before, make it a goal of yours to try and use the verb get and you'll be improving your language if you can replace it with get in these contexts. Okay, so that first section is about the verb to get being used as an ordinary verb. Now, we also use the verb to get in countless phrasal verbs. So as a quick reminder, a phrasal verb, it's a verb plus a particle. Normally 
a preposition or an adverb, which then changes the meaning when you have the combination of these two words together, the verb plus the particle, you have a new meaning. So to give you a small selection of common phrasal verbs with get, again, it's not exhaustive to try and keep the video a reasonable length, but some common phrasal verbs with get. For example, I don't get on with my mother-in-law. This means to have a good relationship with. I got up at six o'clock this morning. This one I'm sure you know, you learn this very early when you start learning English. So uh, this means to, to get out of bed. You see, I use the verb to get again. It's, it's difficult not to use this verb in this context. So this is when you leave your bed. I'm just getting over the flu. So this means to recover, normally for an illness. So if you've been sick, you can say, I'm just getting over it. I'm, I'm recovering, it's the same. I uh, got into cycling recently. So to get into an activity means to become interested in, to start doing something. So if I got into cycling recently, I didn't used to cycle before, but recently I've become interested in it. I'm getting rid of my old sofa. Are you interested? So this means to throw away, to get rid of. I don't want it anymore. And I'm going to put it in the bin, or if not, you can have it. I'm offering it to you in this situation. I don't want it anymore. So to get rid of. So there, yeah, a selection of phrasal verbs with the verb to get for you. This is more difficult to use. You have to memorize these and try to use them and then they'll become part of your vocabulary. But this is probably a bit more advanced than the first section where get is being used as a synonym for more regular verbs. Now, another separate point with the verb to get is something that we use very often in British English and from what I understand it's less common in American English or other Englishes but particularly in British English we use the construction have got very often and it's just a synonym for I have it doesn't mean anything else it looks like the present perfect but it's not really related to the present perfect it's just a fixed construction that we use as a synonym for I have so you can say, I have a car, or I have got a car. And the meaning here is exactly the same. These are direct synonyms. For me, as a native British speaker, I have got a car is much more familiar. It's much more common for me to say that. So the negative of I have a car is I don't have a car. So how do we make the negative of I have got a car? That's right, you need to make have negative because the construction the grammar is the same as the present perfect, even if the context isn't really. So the negative is I haven't got a car. And the question form, do you have a car? So logically, have you got a car? But you don't need to say have got. If you want, you can always use have. The meaning here is exactly the same, but you just need to be aware of this, particularly if you're speaking to British speakers or watching British TV shows or television series, things like that. You'll hear this very, very often. Ah, yes, and you can also use this construction for obligations. So the same as you can say, I have to, as a synonym for I must. For example, I must go to the dentist is the same as I have to go to the dentist. You can also use have got for obligations. So you could say, I have got to go to the dentist. So here you have three different options for obligation, all approximately the same meaning. Ah, yes, and one more point is that the verb to get often has different conjugation between the UK and the US. So the infinitive is to get, the past is got, and the past participle in the UK. So for me, it's always got. So get, got, got, but in the US, you'll often see gotten. So get, got, gotten. Which, if you compare with the verb to forget, makes more sense. Because in British English and American English, it's forget, forgot, forgotten. So which one makes more sense? I'm not sure. You can choose. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope that's clarified a little bit for you the verb to get. Good luck putting this into practice. Please get in touch for any queries, any questions or to organise lessons. Like, subscribe to the channel, check out our other videos, leave feedback, comments, it's always appreciated. But until next time, take care. Bye bye.